Who? Oh my God, is it hot today in Plovdiv? The last time we created a denture video was uh, when, cre when we created our partial denture video, and right then it was Baba Marta, which is crazy weather, and it was raining down on that day. Summer has started in Plovdiv, and it is literally the hottest place I've ever been to. But that is not why we're here today. Today we have finished our prosthetics. Uh, practical examination so I wanted to create a video explaining how we created our complete denture for our exam so let's get into step number one the first thing we did is we created our base plate in creating a base plate, they gave us our edentulous model. And on our edentulous model, we had to define um, certain specific parts, such as we had to um, mark with a pencil the highest point on the ridge. We also had to mark the midline of um, each side of the dental arch and then the midline of the entire dental arch. And then we could actually go on to create our base plate from either base plate or wax. To create the base plate, we heat a sheet of wax um, on the flame and then we place it on top of um, whether the maxillary or mandibular uh, gypsum you have. So we would place the hot, the warmed up wax sheet onto the maxillary um, gypsum model and then shape it around the edges. Important rules to remember is avoid the frenulums. Whenever there's a frenulum, the uh, wax should go up in sort of a triangle manner as you can see over here. Um, also in the posterior part of the maxilla on the palatine surface there should be an arch created in order to avoid certain anatomical structures within the mouth. Once the base plate has been created we can now move on to creating the wax rims. When it comes to creating your wax rims some important rules that we had to follow is that the height of our rim was supposed to be the same height as the height of the central incisor that we were going to place. When it comes to the width of the wax rims we had to create uh, our wax rim one centimeter all around but the actual rule says that it should be 3.5 millimeters on the anterior part and 8 to 10 millimeters on the posterior part of the wax rim and this is obviously to accommodate the width of the teeth that we are going to be placing oh by the way make sure you have a 45 degree angle at the level of the um, distal surface of the first molar on the maxillary at least also remember that the anterior part of the wax rim needs to be inclined vestibularly by five to seven degrees once you have followed all of these rules and you are finally almost ready with your wax rim use a glass plate to flatten the wax rim down to make sure that it is parallel to the horizontal plane of the teeth. The next step we do is to um, smoothen out the edges of the wax rim. This can be done by many, by many different methods. I personally prefer to use a blowtorch and my fingers or if I have a cloth around me, rub it around with the cloth just giving it that nice extra shine. Once you have finished with all of these and you think both of your wax rims for mandibular and maxillary are ready, the wax rims need to be connected together. This is done by creating two X's on the level of the molars on the vestibular surface. Once the wax rims are connected, it is now time to occlidate your denture. It is now time to connect both the arches to an occludator. An occludator can be one such as this simple one or a bit more complex than that such as this one and there are many different types of occludators but as you can see clearly I've had quite a few practices. This one doesn't have one because I only have two occludators and you just have to reuse them and repractice. Remember the more you practice with dentures the better you are going to get. Anyways so when you are connecting them to the occludator one important rule to remember is that the uh, temporomandibular joint, which is this part up here, should be 11 centimeters away from the midpoint of the lower central incisors. Also make sure that the uh, back part of your model is parallel to the ramus of your mandible. When we are occludating, we use gypsum plaster to do it. And gypsum plaster needs to be mixed with water in order to get it ready for the exothermic reaction to take place, which causes it to harden. Now, in order for um, us to get the proper mixture of water to powder, we need to follow the ratio of 1 is to 1. That means that there should be no free powder and no free water. And once you have mixed them together, you should get a texture that looks somewhat like this. This means that you are ready to place it on top of your model. So we place it first of all underneath for the mandibular part. Place your mandibular model on top of it. 
Then we close the articulator from the top onto the maxillary, place gypsum on top of that. Just smooth out, smooth on the top part out. I use a spatula at first and then I wet my hands and then rub it with my wet hands in order to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And it will come out something like this. Then you simply wait for it to dry and if you feel the gypsum, you will see that it does actually get a bit hot, which shows that it is actually an exothermic reaction. So we have finished our oculator and we are now ready for the hardest part of making a denture, tooth placement. By the way guys, remember I will leave links in the description down below for all of the steps of uh, making the complete denture. Uh, people that explain it in much more detail than I do because time is of the essence here. Um, so be sure to check the description out if you do want to create a denture um, and I'm sure it will help you out a lot. This is the most deceiving part of making a denture. This is the part that seems so much easier in theory than it is in practical. This is tooth placement. So when it comes to tooth placement, the first step we do is we preserve the midline. This is done by simply dragging your knife across the midline so you know exactly where it is on the wax rims. Then we start by cutting off a chunk of wax and placing our first tooth, the maxillary central incisor. The maxillary central incisor needs to be touching the glass plate, which represents the horizontal plane, on all of its incisal edge. It also needs to be inclined slightly vestibularly, but remember, very slightly. Once you are done with the maxillary central incisors, we move on to the mandibular central incisors. The mandibular central incisors, once again, should contact the horizontal plane completely on its incisal edges and should be inclined vestibularly slightly. There should be a contact between the maxillary and the mandibular central incisors where the mandibular are posterior or behind the maxillary central incisors, yet they touch just at the tip about one to two millimeters maximum of overlap, not more than that. The next step with the Geise method is to place the lateral incisors. The lateral incisors need to be exactly one millimeter above the horizontal plane. The next step is to place the maxillary canines. The maxillary canines are slightly inclined distally, very, very slightly. If you can't do the slight um, rotation uh, distally, just keep the tooth vertical, it's perfectly fine. And with the canine, the cusp tip should be contacting the horizontal plane, meaning it should be at the same height as the maxillary central incisors. The next tooth is the first premolar. Now the premolars are the biggest pissed now the premolars are the hardest teeth to place in the arch because you always think that they're correct until you get to the end of your dental arch and realize it's the premolars that's making your arch look completely wrong. So the premolars, you need to first of all make sure that the rotation of both the right and the left side of the maxillary premolars is the same. Then you need to make sure that for the first premolar, only the vestibular cusp touches the glass plate and the lingual cusp is one millimeter above the glass plate. For the second premolar, both of the cusps should be contacting the glass plate. Also at this point, make sure that the central grooves of both of the premolars align with each other and the central gro grooves, if you make a straight line, would go to the lingual surface of the canine. This is also where the shape of the dental arch comes into play. I would recommend looking at pictures online on Google, which is what I did, in order to figure out what the shape of the dental arch is actually supposed to be like and then follow along with that picture trying to make your arch as similar as possible. The next tooth that we place in the maxillary dental arch is the first molar. When it comes to the first molar, only the mesiolingual cusp touches the glass plate. All the other cusps should be above the, ga the glass plate and the mesiolingual cusp should be visible from uh, the vestibular view. So if I look at it from this side, I should be able to see the mesiolingual cusp. Moving on to the maxillary second molar. The maxillary second molar, none of the cusps should be touching the glass plate but the mesiolingual cusp, once again, should be the uh, lowest most or the most extended cusp following the same pattern as the maxillary first molar. Here my lateral incisors have a lingual inclination so they need to be more vestibular. This arch is fine. This arch, something's wrong with it. I don't know what. Um, and he said this is not aligned with this line. So the central groove there does not align with this, whereas this one is actually decent. That's it. 
Once we are done with the maxillary uh, dental arch, we need to check it on a glass plate and make sure that the glass plate does not rotate. If the glass plate moves slightly, then you have messed up and one of your teeth needs slight adjustment to make it uh, proper. Now we are done with the maxillary dental arch and it's time to move on to the other side, the mandibular dental arch. With the mandibular dental arch, we have already set the uh, lower central incisors, which should have been the first step if we are following the Geise method. So the next step is to place the uh, mandibular first molar and occludate it with the maxillary first molar. After that, we place the mandibular canine and occludate it with the maxillary canine. The reason for placing these two teeth first is because they determine the shape of the dental arch. Once they have been placed, we can then start placing the lateral incisors, the first, the first premolar, the second premolar and the mandibular second molar. All of these teeth need to be occludating with the upper dental arch properly with no free gaps between them. Once we have done with the placement of the maxillary and the mandibular dental arch, we can start polishing the wax. When it comes to polishing the wax, you can use once again the blowtorch, the blowtorch method, which is a bit more dangerous because it can cause the movement of teeth. So be careful if you do use the blowtorch. And with the blowtorch, we can use a cloth or we can use our fingers to make sure that the arch comes out as shiny as possible. Once we are done with uh, making sure that the maxillary and the mandibular arches are complete and the wax uh, for the gingival part is shiny, we can then move on to flasking. Hey guys, Future Dentist Saad from the future. This video came out to be much longer than I planned for it. So um, I'm going to be cutting it up into two parts. This is part one and then part two will come out um, next in the next video. Um, so be sure to tune in for that. Subscribe down there if you are new around here. Like this video if it did help you out or if you found it interesting. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. video.